Okay, all right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all. Welcome to another chat, uh, first chat, another chat with uh, the founders, co-founders each of Burn the Manual Productions. And we're here today mm -hmm. to just say hello, um, catch up with one another. I have recently moved and I am New here York. with... Uh, <laughs> I just put your address out there. <laughs> I'm here with the lovely co-founder of Burn the Manual Productions. We're just going to do a little talk about why we do what we do, how we do what we do, where our lives are now, and that type of thing. So jump right in, Miss O. Check in. How are things going on the West Coast? <laughs> oh, it's hot. It's hot over here. It's in like, it's almost 90 degrees. It's going to be like that for a week. So I'm very excited. I love the heat. I love to be outside. So, um, yeah, you can catch me at the beach for sure sometime this week. Uh, but besides that, um, working, you know, that's, okay. that's basically, <laughs> that's the vibe. But yeah, I, I've been, I've been doing well, been trying to eat right and just been really dialed in on like filmmaking and, um, really inspired lately, honestly. So that's oh, good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't. I did not know you like the heat. I'm not one for the heat. I prefer the cold. Oh, I don't not like heat at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> don't like the summer. Don't like, you know, people. Are, well, let's let's walk outside. No, I like. The, <laughs> what? Oh, I like the gosh. cold. I don't mind walking outside in the fall. You know, when you have on your mm. coat and you're wrapped up, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just cold enough to see your breath, and that's a cold that you have to like. Or about losing um, limbs. That's not a whole lot of fun. Oh, uh, no, I'm always <laughs> looking for an opportunity to go to a picnic. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I, I always want a that. picnic. Mm -hmm. I did not know mm -hmm. that. Okay. Yeah. Um, How is it over so, there? Are you inspired yet? Anything? Yeah. Inspired? Yeah, I am very inspired. Like I said, this is part of the check-in, but I'm very inspired. I, as you know, I recently moved, relocated again. Mm -hmm. Um realized today that since 1995 that was 27 years ago this is my third like big move right mm -hmm. i was in detroit i went to new york i went from well let me back up i was in detroit i went to japan then i went to new york lived in new york for 13 years moved out to cali moved out of california was there for 14 moved mm -hmm. back east so now i'm back in connecticut on the east coast moved here, not new york uh, <laughs> not new york no but close enough New York adjacent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Close um, moved here. We've been here now two weeks. That's so why it was, it was oh a 3,000 mile trek across the country uh, in a U-Haul with our belongings and uh, my beloved grandson, uh, Jonathan, he came with us at 15. Mm -hmm. and, um, it's so funny. He's growing up so quick. I remember he was little. He was mm -hmm. a baby and he's not, he's not a baby anymore. He's, he's, a foot taller than me and you know and and you know yeah shoes are bigger than mine everything I'm like what is going on here? how were the views but, like did you see really the cool views landscapes? are really good the views are really good um there are some absolutely amazing sh um I wish I had taken more yeah. I think I was so we were so focused on getting here right mm -hmm. So we didn't stop and like look around. Let's take pictures and let's shoot right. some. Let's shoot some footage. It's kind of like okay, stop, pee, pee, eat, yeah, get, some, get caffeinated, get some coffee, get back in the get back in the truck, right? Let's just go, 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 go. Wow. So, um, but I did meet um, some very. I met some people, you know, coming across country that were really great, you know, with customer service. Oddly enough. The closer we got to the East Coast, the worse the customer service got, <laughs> which I was really mm -hmm. shocked about. But I, you know, yeah. um, I met the people, yeah, the people that I met that were doing customer service in Arizona were great. People I met in Tennessee were great. Mm -hmm. People I met that were in, I think we went to the tip of Texas. They were really great. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a little scary. I think we were in Arizona and we got there and nobody was masked up, right? Oh, but they all had guns. They were all mm -hmm. walking around with guns. I was like, what is going on? Some sort of protection. <laughs> I didn't know you could walk around with guns like that. Mm -hmm. I was really, uh, I was like, okay, we, what are we doing? You know, and people just walking around, you know. And yep. so that was a little different. That was a little different. I get, mm -hmm. that, that's my, it's pretty much my check-in and getting settling in, getting settled in here. 
in um, Connecticut and dealing with um, it being really cool in the morning and at night. But during the oh, day, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, during mm-hmm. the day is reasonable. It's not unbearable, but it, it getting settled in. Um, mm. you, um, oh, my. Well, let's talk about earn the manual productions and why we do what we do and how we do what we do and the work that we're doing and the uh, fact that we magically deliciously met and we're able to do all this stuff and make it work and what we're working on now and um, what we're working on in the future. So I'll let you take it away. Um, mm-hmm. any, so, yeah. talk, so talk about something you've seen, heard, experienced, or, you know, um, gone through, acknowledged since, since starting this whole since answering this wacky email from this guy you never knew, <laughs> you never met before yeah. named Anthony. You're like, okay, what's going on here? So talk about that. Any, any, any insights? <laughs> yeah, I honestly, it's being able to be a part of this and create documentaries mm-hmm. brings me back full circle. So like, I've always wanted to create documentaries. I've always wanted to have, you know, create some sort of impact or change. Mm -hmm. And I just never knew how I was going to um, kind of transfer to that because, you know, when you're in school, so when I was in school, um, coming right out of school, I was, you know, editing for like social media influencers. I was just kind of doing whatever work I could get. And none of that was documentary work, really. So it was a bit of a struggle to be like, okay, I'm just going to do this for the money. And then eventually I'm going to get back to my documentary work. And then also, I think I would kind of call certain things documentary work when it wasn't like, oh, I'm filming, you know, a vlog for this person. I'm documenting their lives. But it's, <laughs> it was really like so curated and not documentary work at all. Um, But something I did learn from that experience was like just dealing with people and being around people. And so it it really, to to be here and to be, you know, making films that create impact or, or start a conversation was like the best thing ever. So I feel like you came into my life at like the right time because Mm -hmm. at this point I've been editing for eight, nine years plus, and I'm so ready to kind of transition and take that step away from what I have been doing and back into like what exactly I've been wanting to do all along. So it's been good. It's been really refreshing. It's been, um, I I feel like it's just makes me feel so much better. It makes me like fall in love with filmmaking and editing like all over again. So it's been really nice for me. Okay, good. That is good. To know. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I kind of put you on the spot and I kind of did that on purpose. And like, I think a lot of times, you know, people come into your life mm-hmm. when you're ready for them to come into your life, right? And you make a yeah. decision. That's what I was getting out was this direct. That's where I was leaning. And that's what I was going to is that my life has only moved or opened up when I've made decisions, right? Yeah. A lot of those deci- decisions involved me saying no saying no to certain things. No, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. No, I'm not going to put up with that. No, I'm not going to harbor and and accommodate mm-hmm. self-doubt so that I don't do the things that I really want to do. Yeah. Right. So it's like when you were talking about wanting to do documentaries and, and kind of making these um, concessions, that's what we call mm-hmm. them, concessions with, your, with yourself about, I really want to do X. And this is kind of close enough Mm-hmm. I'll kind of deal with this, even though I really don't want to do this. I really want to do, I really want door number two, but I'm going to yeah. start off what's over here. And I think one of the things that I've made a decision is I have made a decision that A, I'm no longer going to settle for mm-hmm. whatever it is, right? And I'm going to hold out if I really want, just like you said, if I really want to make documentary films, that's what I'm going to go do. Right. Or I really want this to happen over here. That's what I'm going to do. It's like, I'm I'm dealing with that now with, my job search here in Connecticut. I'm looking at mm-hmm. okay, what do I, I know what I can do. I know what I've done in the past, but really being clear. And I have a whole list. I've been adding to my list that, you know, I'm good for writing things down because I think they come mm-hmm. to fruition faster. When you, there's something about putting pen to paper and writing your dreams yep. and goals down, right? 
So I've been adding to it. Like I want to let, I want this to happen. I want these kind of people. I want to work with these kind of people. I want to work this. And it's not just about this kind of money. This is the kind of money I want to work, kind of mm-hmm. money I want to earn for my work. It's more along the lines of what kind of people do I want to surround myself with? Right. Yeah. I'm really looking at, you know, um, I think a lot of jobs are very toxic, you know, and not because the job is toxic. It's because I think a lot of people are toxic, right? Oh, and they don't, oh. and they don't work on not being toxic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then yeah. they bring whatever they, whoever they are, they bring that into the office. And then we get, then we get to, we get the lovely romantic afternoon of having to deal with. It, right? Yeah. It's decide. crazy how like how toxic people can make you fall out of love with what you like to do. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like you come in so excited and vibrant about like living your dream and doing what you really love. And then it just takes one toxic work environment to really kind of just ruin that for you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the trick is always to, and that's what I mean about me having made a decision about mm. really drawing the line in the sand about a whole lot, really my whole life. And I think picking up and moving 3,000 miles across the country was part of that. Like, okay, well, I'm not going to, um, I know what I could do. I know what I've done in the past, but how do I um, get really clear about, like, just like you said about making the films, what do I want to mm-hmm. do? What really yeah. lights me up? What excites me? And I think a lot of times we were, I was talking yesterday to my husband about this or the day before about you know we get into the habit of mm-hmm. we as in people working people we get into the habit of you know I gotta go but I gotta go I gotta pay a mortgage I gotta keep these lights on I gotta do this over here I gotta do that and then you yeah. look up and you're so far you haven't done anything creative that mm-hmm. feeds you on a soul level you haven't done you haven't made we make space to everything but that right and then yep. we wonder why we're cranky and depressed and don't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> so my decision is like, no, I'm going to, and that was my goal this week. How many, how many times can I say no to things? How many different yeah. ways can I say no? Um, I heard Ian Levan Zant say this a couple of years ago, and I was re-watching this video when we were um, en route going from one coast to the other mm-hmm. about exercising your no muscle, right? You gotta have a thousand one ways to say no. Yeah. Because you'll get a lot of things that are approaching you that are going to come at you a thousand and one different ways. So my no to the supervisor is going to sound no than my diff- mm-hmm. no than the it'll sound different than the no I give to the store clerk, right? Or the yeah. no that I yeah. give to somebody else who wants to infringe on my time or whatever. So I think um, that's kind of where I am with a lot of things. Like I don't want to do X, Y, and Z anymore, and why should I? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's you know? so wild. Like even just from an editing perspective for me, I've gotten to the point in my life and I'm sure people get to that point where I'm like, wow, I really just want to edit things that make me happy and that make Mm -hmm. me feel fulfilled, right? Mm -hmm. Like I look at some of the stuff I do and I'm just like, I don't want to do that anymore. And it's so, but at the point I'm just like, okay, I got to work my way towards that. You know what I mean? You can't just cut everything off and be like, cool. So you have to kind of, open up these little pockets of time to dedicate Mm -hmm. to what you actually want to be doing. And then, you know, hopefully that will all build up and, you know, allow you to be doing what you want to be doing in full time. But yeah. But you have to, like you said, you have to make time for, and I think it's very easy to um, make time for everything else. Right. Yeah. And you have to have people around you to say, Hey, like I have an accountability partner who was like really great. And he and I talk on the phone every Saturday morning at eight. I don't think we have, I don't think we've missed a Saturday in more than a year, like oh, every wow. Saturday at eight. And we come up with, and what's really funny is, it's very easy to say, well, what are you doing that for? Or that's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. Or, that doesn't make any sense. But what I look at, I can look at all the, the, the small agreements that I make with him every Saturday. Like, for example, um, I'll make an agreement about uh, a project I want to start. Or mm-hmm. I may want to do some research in a project. Well, just having to check in with that seven days later makes me get it done. It makes it more, it makes it more difficult not to do it. Right. Because I said, this is what I was going to do. But I think um, 
having that and having somebody right there say, okay, well, hey, you said you were going to do this. Let's get it done. I think it's super important to have that. And I think with me, um, as I move into, I guess, more of myself, playing bigger in the world, um, not settling, I'm, I'm systematically, strategically, almost mm-hmm. like building this little army, right? Yeah. Yes, we're going to go into this battle and I can't do, I can't win this battle by myself. Right. So, mm-hmm. if, if I could, I would have done it all right. right? <laughs> but right. it's like putting everybody, it's putting folks together and being very strategic about, okay, this is the project I want to do. This is what I'm working on. Can you help? You know, I know that you have mm-hmm. this skill. Not only can you, are you willing to help? Mm-hmm. Because just because somebody can doesn't mean they want to do it or they have the same vision as you. So, um, I kind of want to wrap up here. Um, so we get this done, get this out mm-hmm. in the world. Um, yes. What is your, I'm trying to think. Um, so I said, I wanted to, you know, I want to, um, this is a segment I want to call shenanigans. So okay. it's something good, bad, or indifferent, right? Something that makes you say, huh. Okay, and I can, and that hunk could be good or bad. It could be indifferent. It doesn't have to be negative. So I will let you. So I'm going to, I've got two or three things that I saw okay. the last 48 hours. I was like, really, people? Um, okay. But I want to, I'm going to kick it off to you. So, so something good, bad, or indifferent, something that you noticed, some, some new insight, mm-hmm. um, something that made you kind of pause, like, oh, okay. So whatever mm. that is for you, take it away. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh Jesus. Something good. Um, oh Jesus. Uh what, what happened that's good? That's tough in America right now. <laughs> uh <laughs> well maybe maybe you saw a news story and you're like, okay, what what's going on here? You know. <laughs> oh well, oh my gosh, there's this story going around. Uh there's this artist named Doja Cat. And, yes. and she, yeah, you heard about that? And she was messaging this ca- cast member from Stranger, Stranger Things. Yes. And she's like, oh my God, she just aired our messages out. Like, that's so sneaky of him. You know what I mean? And it's just, he's 17. Like, why are you messaging a teenager asking him to hook you up or to get a number from? So like, I don't know, it's just weird. So that <laughs> made me stop and be like, what is going on and why are you beefing with a 17 year old but on the flip side there's people who are like why are we putting um just because you're 17 doesn't mean you don't know like how to be a proper grown person you know what I mean or how to follow rules and so it's so weird that some people are defending her and then some people are defending him it's very wait um, wait a minute how old is Doja Cat oh I don't know but she's uh let me see Doja Cat (laughs) <laughs> she's 26 oh she's my age okay so she's okay and he's a minor and, and he's 17 yep okay and she's messaging him and she's like oh like trying to get a number or trying to get him to contact another cast member for her because she wants to like be with them or something like that if i'm reading okay. correctly yeah it was very interesting <laughs> so in other words shenanigans i got you. <laughs> lots lots of shenanigans <laughs> I was like, wow. Because I did see that this morning in my, um, I think I was on Twitter and it popped up in my feed. It was on like mm-hmm. a Google something. And I, oh, didn't even, okay. I didn't even have the heart to click on it because <laughs> I knew it was some foolishness. And I said, I don't even want to know. I don't, even, yeah. I don't even, I don't know who Doja Cat is. And I, and I, um, Isn't it weird? I know the how... cast of Stranger Things because I've, I've, I've been watching them since day one, right? Yeah. Oh, I've did watched you watch the whole. New? Yeah, I've, the new ones I've been watching, and I've watched all three seasons, and I've watched them a couple of times because yeah. my grandkids would come over. We we watch, you know, so mm-hmm. I knew who they were, and I was like, okay, well, I know he's super young. I didn't know what was going on, and I just yeah. didn't have I didn't have anybody to click and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it weird how basic conversations or just basic small issues become so amplified as a celebrity? Right. Like if this was just two normal people normal people nobody just would care thing. no nobody one would care, care. and right. they wouldn't stretch this to be like this crazy thing and now it's just like, why is it trending worldwide why <laughs> <laughs> and why does anybody care but moving on mm-hmm. okay <laughs> oh one more thing too um so uh northwest kim and kanye's daughter right she recently put up they were at a fashion show and she put With up a sign, sign. that says yeah. stop <laughs> 
And there's so much controversy going on with that too, apparently. Half the people are saying, oh my gosh, that poor baby, she's, she's subject to all this paparazzi, just let her live. And then the other half is going, oh my gosh, she's so bratty and spoiled. Like she gets everything she wants and blah, blah. So it's so weird. It's <laughs> such a weird conversation happening right now. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that, I, I'm going to, let's wrap up with that. That's two examples for yeah. our listening audience of major shenanigans on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, I will have some the next time we talk, because trust me, they're coming fast and furious. <laughs> and, they, and if you are a human being living on this planet, there's never any shortage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's wrap up. I think that was great. Um, let's yeah. wrap up with, um, I'll let you take us out there. I'm, I'm going to jump in. Tell me about what your wish is for Burn the Manual Productions in terms of what it, what it can do to serve or uplift the community at large. Yeah, so that's literally my wish is to be able to find um, issues um, and solve them, problems and solve them, to be able to tell people stories in the community, um, to be able to have people feel like they're represented and involved and to just have a company, a production company that's actively in the community and making a difference and not just, mm -hmm. oh, we're just like here for entertainment. We're just having fun. I would love it to not just be, we're filming, but we're also helping and impacting the community. You know what I mean? So okay. that's like the biggest goal. Okay. And I would say mine is very long along the same lines. My wish is that even beyond the cliche of it starting a conversation, my wish is that the work that we put out, the work that I put out, the work that the production company puts out, um, has people pause. Because I think we're always running around and running around. It makes people pause mm -hmm. and it makes us reflect and think differently. And mm -hmm. I think if we can do, if we can pause, reflect and think differently, that will change the behavior, right? Yeah. That'll make people think, or my goal is that we can look at something and say, well, do we have to do it this way? Or just because this is always what the way it's been done, do we need to continue in this vein? Like one mm -hmm. of the big things I'm about is really looking at, okay, um, when you pause and reflect, um, asking yourself, right, is the best, is this the best use of my time? You know, what what is um, can I do this differently? Can I do this better? One of the things, and the big thing for me, the reason I even came up with the name was that I think so many times we don't take action because we don't, we use the whole excuse about we don't know what to do or we don't have a big major plan for how this is how we're going to get from point A to point B. Yeah. And to me, burn the manual is all about there is no man. Right. You figure it out as you go along, right? You, you put one front in front of the other and you self-correct and keep going. And I think a lot of times what I find is that I've had a lot, especially the last 12 years, you know, I've been working I got moved into a job, I've got moved into a series of jobs and career choices where there was no manual. So no amount of training would have prepared me, no amount of reading someone's manual, the company manual would have helped me when some of these things were presented to me or got dropped into my lap. So to mm -hmm. me, Burn the Manual Productions is all about get rid of the manual, right? Pause, reflect, think, um, be able to self-correct, be able to, to create a feedback loop so that yes. you can say, okay, well, hmm, this isn't working. Or we said we want to go from this point to this point. I'm way over here. What do I need to do to correct it? So mm -hmm. to me, that's the big thing. And that's where the name comes from is how do you create um, from a standpoint of the only thing you know for sure is you're trying to get from this point to this point. How do yeah. you get there is on you. And nobody's coming to necessarily help you or guide you. Mm -hmm. So on that note, I'll, let's wrap it up. Um, tell folks where they can find you on Instagram and this big, you're the big TikTok sensation. I'll give my information. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> yeah, well, me, you can find me at Malaya Music. So okay. everywhere, literally everywhere, TikTok, Instagram, all of the above. But you can find the films at burnthemanualproductions.com.
or asktheoldguy.com. <laughs> yes, asktheoldguyfilm.com. We'll talk about that next and burnthemanualproductions.com. And my website is anthony-carter.com. So my name, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-Carter, C as in cat, A-R-T-E-R.com. I'm on Twitter constantly. Those are the two big ones now. We're going to figure out a way to become a TikTok sensation. But until that time comes, you can find us on Twitter or one of these uh, websites we mentioned. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. We will talk to you soon.